I know how important it is to share this with you. Um, I just know how hard it still is even for me to talk about it. Um, it's just as important and it's been encouraged by me for some time, much like, you know, my Aunt Franny sharing the domestic violence story. But uh, it was 1999, Amber Reese. Um, she was just roughly three months old. I had um, got her a little dress to put on her. And um, me and her father both worked at Applebee's and we traded shifts, you know, taking over baby duty. Um, she was fussy, baby. Um, she even had stayed at Children's uh, earlier in the week um, for like a respiratory. And um, one of the afternoons um, that her father had her, he had fed her and, um, you know, burped her and put her in her crib and was vacuuming, you know, the living room and um, she passed away. So, um, since um, sudden infant death syndrome, also known as crib death, uh, it can be genetic. Uh, there are ways that you can try to avoid, you know, the risks or preventing um, possibilities for simply a baby, um, you know, at, especially at a young age, passing away. But um, it's death of an infant less than a year of age, you know, that can't be explained, following after, like, a thorough case investigation that includes an autopsy, uh, a death scene investigation, and a review of the clinical history. The syndrome is sometimes called crib death because the death usually occurs uh, when the child is in their crib. It's associated with sleep, and it often occurs while the baby is sleeping, you know, in their crib. SIDS is the uh, leading cause of post-neonatal, you know, one month to one year of age death of babies in the United States still. 90% of SIDS deaths occur within the first six months of life with the rate peaking between one to four months death comes suddenly and predictably, usually during sleep. Uh, in most cases, the baby seems healthy before death. Currently, the cause of SIDS is still unknown. The possibility, you know, of the syndrome affecting your baby is very frightening and can be still, no matter, you know, how many babies you have, whether it's your first or your fifth. But knowing more about it and taking certain very specific precautions can reduce babies' risks of SIDS. Risk factors for SIDS include uh, placing a baby on their side or stomach to sleep rather than on their back. Um, premature or low birth weight babies, you know, overheating the baby during sleep, sleeping or too, on too soft of a surface, you know, with loose blankets, uh, bumper pads, pillows, stuffed animals. Having a sibling on um, too soft of a surface with them or with loose blankets and bumper pads, um, even, you know, on your bed and you having comforters and things like that. You know, having a sibling who died of SIDS or a family history of uh, failure to thrive. While SIDS can affect any family, it often strikes babies whose mothers are under 20 years of age when their babies are born. You smoke during pregnancy um, have and have received little or to no prenatal care. You know, in this particular case, both parents smoked and uh, the baby was fussy, um, colicky, and even had some um, issues with some congestion, you know, respiratory. But uh, precautions that can reduce the risk of SIDS include, you know, placing your baby on their back, using a firm sleep area, you know, removing any and all other objects. You know, a firm crib mattress covered by a fitted sheet is recommended solely at least to their six months of old age. 
uh, keeping the baby's crib free of all kinds of, you know, any types of toys even, um, and stuffed animals, ensuring that your baby has a smoke-free environment completely, making sure your baby doesn't get too hot while they sleep, you know, making sure the mother gets the early and proper prenatal care all throughout her pregnancy, breastfeeding the baby. All parents can significantly reduce the risk of SIDS by being informed about it and implementing simple but specific risk reduction strategies. Uh, children, um, is a world leader in uh, SIDS research. Even I know Children's Hospital San Diego, but many of even the state hospitals for kids uh, became, you know, so involved in the research and investigating the key questions about this mysterious syndrome, including, you know, what causes SIDS, how to identify what babies are most at risk, you know, and why SIDS strikes babies more, even boy than girls, you know, there's so many different factors and still so many babies that are dying of this that, you know, many are getting involved in trying to, you know, get a hold of the epidemic. You know, becoming a parent is, full, is a full challenge in itself, you know, even in the best of circumstances. SIDS is part of a larger category of unexpected as opposed to unexplained, you know, infant deaths called SUDI there is too, which is sudden unexpected death uh, in infancy. Babies who die suddenly but whose causes of death are later explained, whether it be infection or brain abnormality, you know, cardiac dysfunctions, etc., you know, also fall into the SUDI uh, category. While the cause of SIDS is still unknown, many clinicians and researchers believe that SIDS is associated with problems in the ability of the baby to arouse from sleep, to detect low levels of oxygen, or a buildup of carbon monoxide in the blood. When babies sleep face down, they may rebreathe exhaled, you know, carbon monoxide, normally, um, rising carbon monoxide levels activate nerve cells in the brain stem which stimulate the brain's uh, respiratory and arousal centers. The baby then wakes up, you know, turns their head normally and breathes faster to get more oxygen. SIDS babies, however, may fail to rouse. The triple risk model, model excuse me, for SIDS has been uh, proposed to explain how SIDS occurs. The model holds that SIDS occurs when three conditions exist simultaneously. Um, the infant has underlying, underlying, excuse me, brainstem issues, abnormality, or that makes them unable to respond to low oxygen or high carbon monoxide blood levels. The infant is exposed to a triggering event, such as sleeping face down on its tummy, then events occur during a vulnerable state in the infant's development, i.e., you know, the first six months of life. Thus, SIDS is a diagnosis of exclusion. Um, SIDS, as a cause of death, is determined only when all other causes have been excluded. SIDS is a mysterious syndrome, and by its very definition, the cause cannot be determined. Researchers um, have uncovered strong evidence that SIDS has a biological uh, basis and continuing to work towards even determining the underlying causes and identifying at-risk babies. Uh, parents smoking increases the risk of SIDS. Diseases caused by smoking kill almost half a million people still in the United States every year. Despite anti-smoking campaigns and medical warnings, more than 6,000 children and teens smoke their first cigarette um, you know, each day, and half of those will become regular smokers. Pregnant moms who smoke increase their baby's risk of getting SIDS. Um, quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do for your baby's health and your own. Other things to consider to reduce risk is to bring your baby's crib into your room for the, at least the first six months, possibly because it's easier to monitor your baby when you know he, she, or sleep, is sleeping in the same room as you. Avoid bed sharing. While it may have certain benefits, there are no scientific studies demonstrating that bed sharing reduces SIDS. Uh, some studies suggest that bed sharing under certain conditions, though, may actually increase the risks. 
If your baby seems to be sick, call your doctor right away. Parents should be sure to take their babies for their regular well baby checkups and routine routine excuse me immunizations. If possible, breastfeed your baby. You know, evidence suggests that breastfeeding might reduce the risk of SIDS for reasons that aren't fully understood. Also, children who are born prematurely benefit from special monitoring and intervention during their first years of life. Infant follow-up provides uh, ongoing medical and developmental evaluation even and support for even premature infants too. The Center for Cardiovascular Genetics provides innovative clinic clinical excuse me care education and research the division of general pediatrics seeks to enhance the lives of children and families through clinical care you know teaching research and community service the division of pulmonary medicine serves children with acute and chronic respiratory conditions um, my heart goes out to families with an infant uh, that dies of SIDS because they are faced with the hardest of judgment from anyone and everyone, literally in every direction, including a very intense police investigation, as well as a mix of support or lack thereof from the community, their family, their friends, until the finding of exclusion has been met um, and all other avenues exhausted, which also often unfortunately, is long after the death occurs, uh, which is unfortunate and makes it so much harder. This particularly um, strikes even harder because, ironically, at that time, that was when I was beginning college, and SIDS actually happened to be a paper that I had just wrote. And when I went to attend... Amber's funeral before uh, just before approaching her um, coffin you know to say goodbye her father approached me in almost a confrontational stance it was something he said and we know we can never go back and do things differently but somehow it struck me when he mentioned that that's what I was studying in school. So because of the way it was approached and what was said, for whatever reason, I turned on my heel and left, walked straight out. I ordered a copy of Amber's autopsy. I, I ordered every single hospital record, you know, her birth, her hospital stay, doctor's notes. I mean, I had all of the materials in front of me, and sure enough, they could not find anything. And after that, I was only one other time communication, if you call it, was attempted, and it was her father calling me during him being chased at a higher speed by police because he's running a red light. Unfortunately, a lot of parents, too, begin substance abuse while they're grieving. Now, I'm certain that he wasn't responsible for her death. Um, you know, all points to not. But the grief, the guilt, you know, the, the mental health that occurs, trying to you know, deal with that and seeing him that way and appearing at my door even afterwards, I made a choice to have no more contact because I realized, you know, I had my own, you know, healing to do and wanted to move forward and only hoped, you know, and I know he did eventually seek treatment and even remarried and had more children so um it, it, as tough as it is you know you can go through the hardest of times and realize that you can share your story with others you can learn from events and um you take the information that you have and you do your best with it for yourself. And then, you know, having, you know, more children, another marriage, another life, um, as opposed to, 
you know, God forbid, when there's times where the parents, you know, can't handle it and something more tragic happens or, or siblings, family members, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, like any and all types of illnesses and situations. So I just wanted to do my part to share the information because I know it's important and to remember Amber Reese um, as the angel that I will always, um, you know, think on and um, have her memory as a lesson to share with others, right? Okay, guys, have a great day. Talk to you soon, okay? Bye.